Darren, you got through the DMV faster than anyone ever. <laughs> the Lord's hand appears to be upon me in every aspect of my life. <laughs> I'm good. Like, I've got a wee bit sore, but um, I haven't got a scratch. I walked out through the windscreen and uh, went and played a show and saw more than 100 people come to faith in Jesus and, and all is well. Wow. Okay, I got so many questions about this. First of all, I live down near where you were, and I saw your truck on the side of the road on its no. side, window busted out. <laughs> yeah, the front windshield gone. Like, I saw it. So you flipped your car on the ice, and then I had heard yeah. you had to look for, like, your guitar and backpack and stuff, but you found <laughs> everything, right? Basically what happened was I was traveling down at 40, and I knew it was icy, so I was going slow. I was doing, like, 50, and I uh, hit a bridge. And immediately the car just went, and I tried to steer into it, but ended up in the median, and eventually it flipped up on the other side, facing oncoming traffic. And so at that point, all I could do to avoid hitting the car uh, and killing somebody else was I hit my brakes hard as I could, turned the wheel 180, and rolled it into the ditch. I remember counting, well, there's one roll, and there's two, and I'm like, Lord, this has to stop. <laughs> <laughs> At least you had your seatbelt on, man. And that's an older truck, too. So it didn't have a harness, yeah. did it? No, dude. It just had a regular old seatbelt, no airbag, nothing. How funny, I just went to see it this morning at the wreckers yard. It's bent all kinds of directions, but nothing crushed, nothing crashed in. And I'm thankful for American-made cars, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the road before you, probably an hour or two before you. I hit that same patch of ice. I didn't know you were leaving. I would have called. Uh, <laughs> and I skidded as well. But I was able to not wreck my car. And so your car flips, and then you get out of your car, and then somehow you go to the airport and then go do a show. Who does that? <laughs> I knew when I came out of the vehicle... I knew I was struggling, it was dark, I was trying to find my guitar, I was trying to find my backpack, and it had all flown out through the window, and it was about 100 yards away. And then I heard this voice um, from up the hill, and I was like, is that you, Lord? <laughs> 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 and uh, it wasn't, it was, uh, it was a young man called Ephraim. His name means doubly blessed and fruitful in the scriptures. And uh, he said, bro, are you okay? Let's get you to the hospital. And I remember saying, no, bro, i got to go to the airport. I've got a show to play. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is an old school work ethic that a lot of young musicians and just young people in general do not get. They would have had to go to the hospital, talk about their feelings, how it made them feel after this thing, but not you. You're like, I need my guitar, and i got to get to the airport to play a show. That's the kind yeah. of rock star I love. <laughs> I remember sitting on the plane and, and the boys in the band looking at me like, you're a lunatic, Darren. What are you doing? <laughs> and uh, the truth is, I knew I was okay, and I knew that I had a job to do, and that there was one of two people derailed me. It was either, well, well, let's name three. It was either the devil, the Lord, or the Tennessee state's inability to salt their roads properly. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had to go to work and do what the Lord called me to, and it was, it was stunning. It was a beautiful night. Yeah, so then you go, and you said like 100 people came to faith. That's pretty impressive, man. What a, what a great end to a uh, really bad beginning. Yeah, it was funny, Wally, you know, and you've known me all these years. I'm in a really good place with God, a really a really sweet place with Him. And uh, I don't look at the accident as something that I despise or that I hate. You know, I, I hate that I've lost my truck because it, it was a beauty. But I see it as the goodness of God in my life. I, when I was careering across the ice wall, I knew Jesus was there. Like, I could tangibly feel Him in the vehicle with me. And so I wasn't afraid at all. And my wife was still waiting for me to have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Okay, so right. Jesus is tangibly there with you in the car. You have to tell me, as you're sliding on the ice, did the song Jesus Take the Wheel pop into your head? <laughs> Jesus Take the Wheel. <laughs> well, I tell you, if Jesus took the wheel, he's not a particularly uh, safe driver. I don't, uh... <laughs> so when you like get to the airport, does the gravity of all that just happened kind of hit you? I got to tell you a good one, Wally, right? Bear with me. I'm on the plane. The only thing in life that I'm really afraid of is turbulence. I hate turbulence. And bear in mind, I'm shook up from the crash or whatever. And the pilot comes on and he says, it's going to be a smooth ride. We've got good air all the way to Denver. And I said, great. I told my bandmate, I said, lads, I'm going to the bathroom. So I went and I literally sat on the toilet and the plane started shaking violently. <laughs> And not from Darren. I want to, I want to be very clear. <laughs> I said, 
said to the Lord out loud, I think the steward has heard me, I said, not now, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're like, Lord, we were good after the accident. Why do we have to, like, increase my faith with turbulence? Yeah, just one peaceful trip to the bathroom in an airplane. That's all I was looking for. <laughs> I find so much humor in it. Walking through the airport with the boys, and uh, my bass player turned to me and said, well, that's what you get for writing songs called Come What May. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs>